Dire. Please welcome our master of ceremony, Charlie. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Annie Magique. Bienvenue à tous. I'm Charlie, and I'm delighted to be with you guys tonight. Je suis ravie d'être parmi vous ce soir, and even more because tonight we have the true honor and pleasure to welcome on the stage a very special guest. At the head of Disneyland Paris, she inspires more than 16,000 cast members to deliver a unique and unforgettable experience to our guests every day. She will very soon take new responsibilities overseas, adding Disneyland Resort and the Walt Disney World Resort to her scope. And you know what? She really insisted on meeting you guys tonight. So why don't you help me in giving a warm welcome to our President, Mrs. Catherine Powell. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Bonsoir. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. We're so excited. I have a lot of questions for you. Obviously, my first one is, Catherine, can you tell us more about your Disney career before Disneyland Paris? So I've been at Disney, working for Disney for 14 years now. This June will be um, 14 years. Um, and I started, I actually, before I joined Disney, my first job was a assistant to a journalist who did news programs in war zones. So I was in, I filmed news programs in Somalia, in Sudan, in Ethiopia. Never could I have imagined 35 or 30 years ago that I'm not 35 actually, I'm not that old. <laughs> 20 years ago, um, that 20 years later, 25 years, I'd be wearing Mickey ears and uh, living in the most beautiful park in the world. So it's incredible. So I started doing that, worked for the BBC a bit, and then joined Disney, selling Disney's programs and Disney's channels to TV channels and stations around the world. And then in 2014, I went to Australia for two years with my family and ran all of Disney's businesses So consumer products, um, feature film releases, ESPN, websites, um, theatrical stage shows. And then in 2016, I was invited to come here. So that was my short story of how I got to Disneyland Paris. Um, so I must be about seven or eight. And I asked him for a pair of glass slippers. And the next morning, imagine my disappointment when Father Christmas said the glass factory was closed. Um, so I never had my glass slippers, but actually, you can see behind me, I did get a glass slipper from the release of Cinderella, the movie that was, would be released that in, in Australia. But those are my two earliest memories. Everyone has been really excited about the 25th anniversary here at Disneyland Paris. What's your, what's your best memory about it? That was, I don't know how many of you were here on the 25th, on the 12th of April. Yes. Oh my God. I mean, that was just incredible the sun shined like it is today which was so great because april's not necessarily known for its um sunny sunny days the parts look beautiful absolutely beautiful we've done all the work to get it ready we had the grand celebration in the morning and then we had my favorite bit which was the the cast member flash mob which was just fantastic it was a very 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 special moment i did any cast members are here it was the day that I had my chair de poulet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we will give you again the chair de poulet because I think we have the video right in the booth. Should we take a look at it? On est trop surexcité, on a on prépare ça depuis déjà plusieurs semaines. En équipe seul euh, vraiment jusqu'à hier soir très tard, euh, on avait vraiment envie d'être prêt. Ouais. On l'a ce matin, ça s'est super bien passé et euh, on, en, on en a des frissons quoi. Il fait beau, c'est magnifique. La journée ne peut qu'être magique. Euh, voilà, c'est les 25 ans donc euh, on a vraiment hâte d'y être. Et en haut, après la Pina. Et merci. 
merci pour tout ce que vous faites pour aujourd'hui. C'est vraiment un rêve de petite fille qui se réalise, qui déjà travaillait à Disney et en plus d'y être pour les 25 ans, parce que c'est aussi mes 25 ans, donc euh, j'ai vraiment hâte. Le casque en beurre, c'est euh, trop fort. Ah ouais, ça va déchirer. <rire> Vous êtes 15 000 passionnés et représentez pas moins de 500 métiers. C'est vous qui êtes Disneyland Paris. Sans vous, Disneyland Paris ne serait jamais devenu ce qu'il est aujourd'hui. Joyeux anniversaire, happy birthday et merci, merci de le profond de ma cœur. C'était une journée incroyable pour moi. J'étais tellement émue. I'm honored to be with you. Have a wonderful day. Bah, c'était super, c'était une super aventure, une super expérience. Euh, vraiment une super bonne ambiance, euh, génial, fantastique. C'était... Ouais, c'était bien. <rire> c'était extra. Génial. On est allé au... De la joie, c'est génial, il fait beau en plus, on a de la chance. Et voilà, c'est un moment qui va être marqué, comme pour le 20 e j'étais là et je suis content d'être là pour le 25 e On avait envie de pleurer, on était excités, c'est génial, c'est une, une aventure à, à vivre, franchement, franchement, génial. It was, it's incredible. It was definitely, it, it was and, and remains the best day of my uh, career to date. Definitely. Amazing, amazing day. <laughs> so, the festival of uh, princesses and pirates is now finished. Oh, yes, oh. it's now finished and it was wonderful. But the Summer of Superheroes launch is coming up next week. There's a lot going on here lately. Um, what can we expect next? Can you tell us? So yes, we've we finished Princess and Pirates, which was amazing. I don't know if any of you have seen some of the YouTube videos of our guests from from tiny, tiny ages to, to adults clearly here tonight who learn the choreography. <laughs> exactly. And it was just incredible. And to see the little princesses who join their, their idols do the choreography with them, that really caught the imagination of our of our fans and the cast members, I have to say. And the final battle a couple of days ago was wonderful. So that's a new season. And then the Summer of Superheroes, which launches in, in a few days, um, our Marvel event, which is, we've got a fantastic show that the team are working on for that. And what we're really trying to do is introduce more seasons and events like Fan Days. I mean, Fan Days is a, is a first. We've never done anything like this. No park has done something like this before. We're trying to do more events, a bit like Electroland that we did last year that we'll do again. We have our fun runs our Disney runs, and we're doing more the seasons like the food and wine. So we're trying to, throughout the year, create experiences for you that are diverse, that, that appeal to lots of different interests, and basically keep a, a, a beat of, of product, if you like, a beat of experiences throughout the year. So yes, it's something that the team are very, very focused on, and it's, it's part of the history of, of DLP. We haven't, Disneyland Paris, we haven't had the investment that the other parks have had and so we've really had to lean into to entertainment and I think I think you'll all agree that the entertainment here, our parades, our costumes are some of the most beautiful of all the parks and so it's it's great to be able to do even more with that. Are we allowed to tell them about the Lion King bat too? There's, there's the Lion King. I'm, I'm always worried because I'm terrible at, at, I've got my comms here, I'm terrible at sharing things prematurely. 
So if you've said it, I'm guessing it's okay yes. that we've got our Lion King, our Lion King next year, which will be unbelievable. I mean, that film is going to be fantastic. So that's a very special season. So we're, we're continuing, I mean, Season of the Force, which was You Will Come Back, we're continually trying to do new things. And we've had lots of requests for Princess and Pirates to come back. We definitely want that to come back. Definitely. <laughs> so, who's your favorite character then? Uh, not Aurora, despite my desire to have the name. Um, Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Why? Because just look at her. She's just like, you know, what's not to like? Walt Disney was an incredible visionary with a philosophy that still guides us. How, how did he inspire you in, in your work here in, in Disneyland Paris? Well, he's Walt Disney, and, and there are going to be so many of you in the room who know so much more about him than, than I do, because our fans are experts, so I defer to your knowledge and your expertise. But he was an incredible visionary. I mean, if you think of, of what he's achieved and the legacy that that has, has given the company from the first synchronized cartoon with Steamboat Willie, the first animated film with Snow White. And if you look now, we, we own Pixar, which created the first computer-generated film with Toy Story. Lucasfilm, which is also part of Disney, has ILM, Industrial Light and Magic. And any film that any of you have seen and loved, apart from a Disney film, will have ILM effects. They are world-class, world-leading in effect. So this, this legacy of innovation and technology and creativity is, is Walt's. And he was also, he was talking about driverless cars and GPS back in the 50s. He, he created the Walt Disney Imagineers, I think in 1952. And so he had this, this vision that these people with imagine, in, incredible talent and imagination, we have one in the front row tonight, star Tom Fitzgerald. <laughs> coming, coming soon tonight at 10 p.m. But they are, they, they are fantastic. They are the best in the world. It's so, I mean, working in, in, a, in the parks, business and being able to work with these geniuses is incredible and that was Walt but Walt also had a philosophy about about life and about about how one should live and he talks about curiosity he talks about you know curiosity taking you down new paths he he talked about the fact that Disneyland would never be completed so long as there's imagination in the world and you see that with the parks with the development that is ongoing and he talked about people a lot he said you know you can have these amazing ideas but it's people who make them happen. And I think for my inspiration, um, for what I have tried to sort of inspire in the, in the cast members is just this, be, be, be curious and, and think differently, dare to think differently and, and take risks that we will support you on. Bob Iger, senior of the Walt Disney Company. He recently met the French president, Mr. Macron at L'Elysée to announce an historical investment and in fact, Macron even referenced Disney uh, in his speech in uh, VivaTech. So could you tell us more about this multi-year expansion plan? Could you? So can, I just, can we go back to that photo a second? Oh, I just want to point out where I was sitting. <laughs> so, I, I, those knees are Bob Chapek's knees, and I'm about here. Just, wow. I was that close to President Macron. Who, who spoke perfect English, perfect English. He was very, very impressive. No, that was, I mean, I have been so lucky with my time at, 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 at Disneyland Paris. If you think that we, we start, I mean, golly, we started at a very, very, I started, sorry, at a very difficult moment in July in 2016, which as many of you will remember was, I started two days before Nice, the Nice attack, and saw the business just disappear. It was awful. and, and Morale, I mean, generally in France was pretty low, but it was, it was terrible. And we just, you know, what Disneyland Paris and the cast members and fans who keep us going did best to sort of just carry on, get ready for the 25th. And it just all came together after the 25th. We had the 25th, then Disney took us private, which was also a big moment for Disneyland Paris and meant that we could have this incredible investment. So if we now go, we can now remove Bob JPEG's knees from shot. And there you see this, this artistic vision, incredible, that, that 
Mr. Reference again, Mr. Tom Fitzgerald, sitting in the front row, um, has been part of pulling this creative vision together, and it's so exciting to have this. We'll have, we'll have the lake as our sort of focal point, and we'll have our lands, have Star Wars land, and Frozen, and obviously Marvel land, which has has already been announced. We do that, so it's 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 going to be incredibly incredibly exciting. It will be pretty disruptive for the Walt Disney Studios. Those of you who remember the work that we did in preparation for the 25th, there are lots of um, closures as we try to make everything look absolutely beautiful. And the Walt Disney Studios, they'll be even more. So we very much want to make sure that we take you, our fans, on the journey with us, show you the excitement as we develop things and share with you as we can reveal new things. Because it will be a really, really exciting journey. We're excited too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, what's the typical day of work for you? What, do, what does it look like? Oh, well, no day. No day is the same, except that every day is just full of meetings. There's meetings. Um, so the day, the day, my day starts, I, I guess I get in about 8.30, it starts with me making a proper pot of coffee. I eat a pot, not these little, that, that everyone in the office drinks, these little tiny things like that. Stretto. Yes, I mean, no. that's not, you know, coffee, you need a proper plunger and you put it in a mug and you add milk and it's, start your day that way. Um, so I start with that. And then, and then it can, I mean, you, you, you can, you have to kind of, I have to change gear because I'll go from a meeting with the finance team perhaps on what the quarterly numbers look like and then I'll have a, a meeting on, on last week's attendance or the weekend's attendance and how that looks and which territories are coming and, and how that's doing. Um, and then I might have a meeting on um, the plans for the new Hotel New York, which is exciting. The creative meetings are, are the most, are incredibly interesting. It's fantastic to do that. I've been able, I've had meetings where I've seen the, um, sorry, I, the, a typical day could be then a meeting to see a rehearsal for the, the new Marvel show, for example. Then we might be, I might be meeting public partners, um, the Préfet or the Maire de Paris, where we're at Paris, where we're talking about working together, or we might be talking about security, or we might be talking about the new extension. And then I will, at about five o'clock, start having calls with the, with the US, or um, conference calls, or VTCs, where we share creative. So it's, it can often be a, lo a long day, but it's so interesting. I mean, it, no day is the same, and every meeting is incredibly interesting. I'll do a lot to also try to get to the park, to see things in the park or to meet cast members. We have um, showtime where I can um, dress up and, and do one of the jobs that the cast members do. So I had a, I had a time I, did, I had a time at the Hyperion Videopolis at the quick service restaurant and I have to say I was not quick. I have so much so much respect now, people who can do all these things with, like, remembering tomato ketchup and mustard and coke and ice and, oh my gosh, it's very, very stressful. Um, but I'll try and do things like that to understand. So no, it's very, very varied, which is what makes the job so amazing. So you will soon have new responsibilities too, overseas with the Western region, in which you will, um, you will oversee, so the Walt Disney World Resort, Disneyland Resort, and Disneyland Paris. So that's a lot. How do you feel about it? Sort of in all, <laughs> I, don't, it's, I mean, it's, it's an incredible, it's so exciting. I feel every emotion, honestly, at the moment I feel every emotion. Um, incredible honor to be doing it, incredibly excited, um, incredibly emotional about leaving, moving from here. Um, I mean, Disney, Disneyland Paris is my first, my first park love, so we'll always be will always have a special place. And I'm, I'm still obviously going to be connected. Um, but we're moving, so it's a, that's a big, it's a big deal. But I think to be able to, for me to be able to have the view of all three parks and the domestic in particular and see what we can leverage for Disneyland Paris. I mean, Disneyland Paris has for so long been on its own, doing stuff with its own budgets on you know, what it can do with, its, with, with the challenges that they've had, particularly because we weren't part of the Walt Disney Company. Now we can see where there are synergies and opportunities. You can see things like when we opened or we announced our Marvel Land, we announced Marvel Land in Hong Kong and also at Disneyland. And we're looking, you know, you can see that, you will know that um, Ratatouille is going to Epcot. So the, 
I think there'll be many, many opportunities for more synergies like that. Is this how they actually learn from and inspire each other, all of the parks? Yes, they, they do. I mean, they, there's each park um, has a distinct nature. And I, I'm, as I said, I've got Tom sitting there and he'll be able to speak to this far better than I can. But there is something that is authentically Disney. Bob Iger, um, when he talked about Shanghai Disneyland, talked about it being authentically Disney but distinctly Chinese. And you, when you look across the parks, even parks that are as similar as Disneyland Resort and Disneyland Paris, they have their own identities. And what we've done, we talked about the seasons earlier, we've done a lot here to try to give Disneyland Paris its own identity and something that appeals to our European and our, our French guests. And so the parks are different. If you look at World, each of the lands has its, has its own DNA. So there's a lot that's different, but there's a lot that's the same. So it's, it's, it's going to be very exciting. But I, I do think that there'll be a lot that can be shared, and having that overview will make it much easier. That makes me want to show you a little trailer, and I think we're all going to have to share the poulet again. Roll it! <laughs> We set out to make magic on land and at sea in destinations around the globe, all with one goal in mind, to welcome our guests. amazing journey. Over two and a half billion people have traveled along with us. And yet, after all these unforgettable moments, we're just getting started. to pick just one attraction here at Disneyland Paris, which one would it be? What's your favorite one? Well, my, my, favorite, my favorite one was the, partly it's my favorite because it was the first one I went on. Pete, no, I need to say, Pete, it's, it was the first one I went on and it also has Tinkerbell, so it's Peter Pan. And also it has London and I'm British. Um, so it's, I love, absolutely love that attraction. And it was one of the first ones that it was redone in preparation for the 25th. And it just, it was so beautiful. I remember going over it the first time and just it took my breath away. There's a picture of it. It's my, I love it. And I still love it every time I go on it. I love it. What will you miss the most about Disneyland Paris when you will be there? The cast members, obviously. And our fans. Our fans who are so... It's the people. I, I mean, the, the, there will be, there are wonderful fans and wonderful cast members in the other parks, and I'm so excited about that. But there's such a, there's a very, I have a very sort of special affection 
for our cast members and our fans here. They are amazing. I'll miss our castle, which is obviously the most beautiful of all the parks. Um, I won't miss the grey skies or the, the rainy weather when the parade is called off, although it's rarely called off. I mean, it's incredible in what conditions. I remember the first time I was here, I was like, well, they're not going to do that, are they, in this weather? I said, no, everyone's fine. It is, it's incredible, it's incredible how, how our guests are so hardy. Um, so, uh, no, there's, I mean, I'll miss Paris as well, but I will be coming back. This isn't, you know, this isn't goodbye. And what would you like people to remember as your main legacy here at Disneyland Paris? Well, I hope not the Cher de Poulet, <laughs> because that's, that's, not, that's not very serious. No, I, God, I'm, I am, you know, I, I feel that I am, I am a moment in time for, for Disneyland Paris. I'm given, I've been given the sort of the honor of caretaking Disneyland Paris and, and the brand and looking after it and cherishing it and then I'll hand on to my successor at one time. So I feel I'm, it's, you know, I have a role to play. So it's more, you know, what I can contribute in, in that time. I hope that um, we, we, we started together, my time here, as I said, at a very, very difficult stage. And, and I really hope that, that together with the, the cast members, we've managed to sort of bring more optimism and more and, and, and pride in what they do. It's incredible. And I think there is a real pride for where Disneyland Paris sits at the moment in Paris, in France, and with, with um, the Walt Disney Company. I think we're at a, in a very, very good place. So I'm delighted to be leaving with that. My last question is not a question, it's actually a picture. Can we take a look at it? It's coming up. Can you explain us this story? What happened that day? <laughs> okay, does anyone in the room know? In which case I might lie. <laughs> to you. <laughs> was, you know, was anyone in the room there? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, someone raised his hand over there. You were okay. there? Okay, okay. So, so that was at that was a month before the 25th, and it was our 30th anniversary um, of the main agreement with the state. And the president then, President Hollande, came to Disneyland Paris, um, and we, we I met him. He was oh, there. We are. He was charming. Um, we we went on a little a little tour, and then we came into one of our conference center rooms which was enormous and there must have been about a thousand people sitting down all the sort of the guard and the all in their costumes with their uniforms sorry not costumes <laughs> uniforms and feathers and everything and then this wall of media absolutely wall they were like 10 layers high or something and i was i was kind of he's he was very sort of chilled so i was quite sort of relaxed about it all well, even though i mean the, the, there was a huge fanfare of protocol um, and we walk into the room and then I, I'm announced as normal with my jingle and I'm walking up, I'm walking up on stage, so if I'm sort of, there's the stage, and there's my closet, I'm walking up on stage and as I step, I sort of, I was stepping and I couldn't, I couldn't move any further and I think like, what's that? So I tried to step again and my heels, not dissimilar to these, you can see I'm wearing a lace skirt, my heels were like tent pegs that had gone through the tent and I was like this, <laughs> literally like this. The, President Hollande was about here, and I'm, I'm halfway up, like this. <laughs> and I'm, shit, shit. And I was like, you know, and behind me, there was this a thousand people going, <gasps> like, you know that. And I could hear the jingle of the uniforms as they're all jumping up to come and help me. And I was, I was like there thinking, okay, I could die. I could pretend to die like that, and then, and then it will all go away. And I said, no, 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 it's fine. So I was telling them, you know, c'est bon, c'est bon. And I kind of span around, sat down. I had to disentangle my shoes from, from my skirt. And I went, c'est bon, c'est bon. Picked up my shoes and walked. I had to walk across the whole stage to the, the, the lectern, the pulpit. Um, and then I had to say, you know, wait a moment, put my shoes back on stand up and then I, I then I think I said, I mean it was such a, a blur, I think I said to President Hollande, and there was I worried that something was going to go wrong. <laughs> and, then, and then I had to give a speech for 12 minutes in French with my heart going like that. And at the end of it, when I stood up to come and I went to go down the steps again, President Hollande and his 
very important person with lots of feathers jumped up to help me down. <laughs> down. So it was, oh my God, it was, it was the most embarrassing moment of my life. And I, it was even more, it wasn't so much that the president of France was there, it was that my husband and three boys were in the audience and I knew they'd be dying of embarrassment, absolutely dying of embarrassment. But um, President Hollande was very, very charming. He, um, first of all, he said, you, you told me that there were going to be some surprises in your speech. You know, there certainly were. And then he, um, he told me that I'd created a new attraction. <laughs> and then the cast members for a bit called me Cinderella. So, so that was my most embarrassing moment of my life. Yeah. So that's the story. <laughs> that was amazing, though. Catherine, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you later. I'll be out and about. But thank you. And we hope you are enjoying your first ever Fun Days event. Remember one thing? It is so much fun to be a fan!